Hello everyone and welcome back to your piano lesson. If you are here for the first time, I am Gianluca Fronda, your virtual piano teacher. If you want to discover interesting facts about me, you can watch the introduction video of this channel. I'm leaving the link in the description of this video, where you will find also the link for my artistic channel Gianluca Fronda, pianist and composer, if you're interested in original music and covers. Talking about this channel, don't forget to subscribe and uh, let me know about yourself uh, by commenting, tell me when uh, you have started, if you are finding my channel interesting and you are improving your skills also thanks to my videos. And don't forget also to share with your friends if there is anybody interesting in piano music, any that, anybody that you know. So now time to go to our lesson. Hello everybody and welcome back to these music theory lessons. Today I'm publishing the fourth music theory lesson. Today I'm going to talk about the dot and the dotted notes. I'm going to talk about the ledger lines and about the rest signs. But let's talk step by step about each of them. So, what do I mean saying that I want to talk about the dot and the dotted notes? In the first lesson, in the first music theory lesson, I have told you that I, um, at the beginning, I want to show you the main three elements that are needed to build up the most basic, the first music values, the notes values, the first notes values. And which ones were they? If you see this page, you will remember. If you have watched carefully the first uh, music theory video, the first tutorial that I have published, you will recognize this page. It's the, the page where I have explained the three uh, main elements needed to build up the notes. The circle, the stem and the color. Today, indeed, what I have to add, and I am editing this page, we need the dot that is something that we are going to add on top of the three main notes that we have already discovered. What is different uh, when it comes to, dot, to the dot is that I have told you that by adding one element to the circle, I mean the stem, I am reducing up to half the value, the length of this note. Indeed, this one is four, and I'm getting, by adding the stem, two counts. By adding the color to the, into the head of the note, I am getting half of it, it is one count, so four, two, one. When it comes to the dot, all changes. It's not anymore about reducing the quantity of counts, so the amount, the length of the sound, but it's about now adding length. And which one is the power of the, of the dot? Pay attention, because if you will learn now, you will never forget anymore. The power of the dot is one of adding half of the value of the note. Half of the value of the note. Half of the length of the note. Indeed, is exactly the opposite concept. The elements, the main three elements, they have the power of, I mean these and these, of reducing, to reduce to half the value, the length of the circle. The stem reducing to half, the color reduce up to half the value of this one. The dot is adding half. If it's placed straight after the four counts note, four plus half of four, that is two, will be six. The dot straight after this uh, two counts note would add half of two. Half of two is one. Two plus one would be three. And I don't want to talk today about this one because it would be too complicated if you have no idea of the existence of the half count note. And even more, indeed, will be left for the near future. But for now, today, the one that we are going to analyze will be the second one, the dotted minim. Indeed, let's open a new page. Today we are simply going to discover the dotted minim. I want to exclude also the dotted semi-brief. So, dotted minim. It's simply a minim. It could be any. I'm using both clefs. It could be the middle C dotted. It could be the D. 
dotted could be the E. Any could be the C written in base clef. Why not? Dotted could be the B. Dotted could be the A. Any note. Any note. And all of them are worth, each of them, three counts. Three counts. Because let's repeat, the power of the dot is one of adding half of the value of the note. Two plus one. Not only in this case, always, 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 the dot adds half of the value. And let's have a little bit of fun today, creating some new rhythm, because if you remember, when I explained to you um, all the possible combinations uh, that you can get in the 4-4, in the 3-4, in the 2-4, uh, using simply the main three elements, the circle, the circle and the stem, empty circle and stem, the circle with a color inside and the stem, these ones were the only options that we got. But now you can see, you will see that we can extend the rhythms. For example, I'm going to use a simple uh, treble clef uh, stave, yeah? So, for example, I can, in a 4-4, four, four, and let's obviously place now the time signature, in a 4-4 four, four, I, I repeat that I can have a note that is four counts. Then I can have two minims, as we said. We can have four crotchets. I'm simply repeating one second what I already told you, in case you missed the, the other video. Uh, we can have, for example, a two counts note and two uh, one count. But today I'm going to talk us about, I, I'm going to extend the possibilities using the dotted meme. Uh, I can have uh, also, first of all, two one count notes. Uh, today I'm also adding this because I will talk about it later. Yeah, This is a possible note that you will immediately find. And now, why not? Look, I'm going to use, pay attention, a dotted meme. How many counts is the dotted meaning? We said three counts. What do I need now to complete the four counts needed to draw the bar line? I need one count. And indeed, this is another opportunity finally that you have. That's all. And I can do also the opposite. I start with one count and I place the three counts note straight after, yeah? We had also this option. Indeed, it can be added also here, but I mean, there is no real need. On top of this, remember that we can add also now these two rhythms. 3 plus 1 and 1 plus 3. You can easily understand now that finally, when I move to a 3-4 time signature, I can finally use one note that complete just one, that complete one bar. And indeed, the dotted minim the dotted minimum, since it's three counts, by yourself, can fill in the whole bar. And, on top of the rhythms that we discovered here, we can simply add this option that we have now. Completing the bar using just one sound worth three counts. That's all! And it's obvious that I can't do anything uh, with the 2-4 uh, for now, but I, I, we will definitely discover that there are more opportunities. I keep saying that I can use just this one because I don't want to talk about different time signatures, more complicated, where you might use obviously the dotted semi-brief, but for now it's, ex it's exceeding the amount of counts that we can um, use for now. Because obviously you understand that if I use a dotted semi-brief I go, I extend the, the value, the length of the note, and is exceeding, and it doesn't fit in one bar that can contain up to four counts. So this is something that we will discover later. Same, sorry, I don't want to talk yet about the dotted crotchet, because it would be too complicated for now. You will discover in just a few lessons, okay? So that's all regarding the dotted meaning. Uh, the other thing that I have mentioned are the ledger lines. Because obviously now, if we go one second back to uh, the last page that I used in the, in the previous lesson, the third music theory lesson, you can definitely notice that until now I've been using simply and only notes on the stave. What do, do I mean? Saying notes on the stave, notes on the lines and in the spaces, in the treble clef and in bass clef, plus just three notes in between the two staves. I can even add, obviously, the, uh, the bracket. This is the same identical note, as you know. Middle C, played 
written in, two, in the two different ways, one for the top stave, one for the bottom stave, but you know, but you know that is exactly the same identical key. Is the middle C that is on the keyboards, 88 keys, the C4, or on the keyboards, 61 keys or 5 octaves, is the C3. Now, I want to definitely go over, I want to add more notes, because obviously you understand that the keyboard is made of many more keys. With these notes we are simply covering a very small range of notes. It goes from this one, that is the G, G that is written on the first line of the bass clef, up to this F. And this is a very small range of notes. I mean, for you it could be too much if you're just starting, but are not all the notes. I want to discover how to write down these ones that are on the left, or those that are higher than the F. And how do I do? Indeed, I have mentioned that I need ledger lines. Same concept, same as the middle C that is having a small fragment of line, the other ones will need lines that have to be added on top. And what are these ledger lines? They are simple fragments of potential and invisible lines that are, anyways, hidden. If you remember, in the first lesson I've told you that in the past, in the 18th century, they understood that the best way to write down the music, so piano music, music for a keyboard, was the one of using five lines for the top stay, for the treble clef stay, for the right hand, and five for the bass clef stay, for the left hand. But you can easily understand, as I have also mentioned, that we can't cover all the notes. We might have a quantity of line that could go up to 44 if we want to be really, you know, if we want to simply count the amount of notes. Having 88 notes, it's something around 44 lines, writing one on the line and one in the spaces, one on the line and one in the space. Obviously, it would be too much, it would be too complicated having a stave, a music sheet made of 44 lines. That's why we are using just 5 for the right hand and 5 for the left. But we can add ledger lines. Indeed, I want to add now. I want to go over this note, for example, the one that is simply sitting on the fifth line on top of the treble clef stave. If this one was F, yeah, obviously this one would be G. Would be, so if the F was exactly this one, the G just on top would be this one now just one step to the right. And I can do more now, I can finally add the invisible lines, but I add, same as I did with the middle C, I add just one small fragment. So this is the ledger line, and I put, I simply draw the circle. And this one would be, the note that is straight to the right, would be A, straight after the G. So the last one was the G, A, here we are, this is the a that I just wrote, and we can do even more, because the, the notes can be written not only having the small line in the head, they can also have the small line, the small ledger line underneath. We say that this is a line that is in the throat of the note, and is just one step higher. This one is A, this one is B. Let's see on the keyboard, the previous one was A, and this is the B straight after. And these are the, um, the only cases, notes on the lines, notes with a ledger line in the throat. Obviously now pay attention, if I want to go over, what do I do? I have to add this line that was already here, but now I can write one more here. So I have two lines of which one is in the throat and one is in the head. But I can also do, and obviously would be B, A, B, C, but I can do even more. I can now have two ledger lines in the throat and the note on top of the last one, and would be C, A, B, C, D. These are all the notes that would be exactly here, so A, B, C, D. Here we are, and this is something that you can do also in the bass clef. Same identical story. If this one was the G, this one underneath would be F. So if this one, the, pre the last one on the line was the G, this one would be F. I can go over doing E, G, and C. Let's see one second. So F is this one. Now this one would be, pay attention, would be the E. It's exactly like the middle C in treble clef, simply that is under the bass clef stave. And we can do more also here. And this is the D. So not only in the throat, but also on top of the head. And same story also here. I can have one in the, in the throat, let's say, or on top of the head and one in the head, in the middle, in the middle, passing through the circle. 
and this one would be the C. So G F E D C or going up C D E F G. That's all you have to know about the ledger lines. You can have even more, more and more. Obviously, more you have, more will be complicated. But that's all you need to know now. For now, there is another way to write them, the, the ones with many ledger lines that will make it easy. But for now, let's start from the ledger lines. And let's extend maximum indeed up to, let me add just one more, up to the bottom B. So you see, we have, same as we, I did in the treble clef, we have, for now, maximum two ledger lines in the throat. Maybe let's use just one term for both. And uh, we have one ledger line in the throat and one in the head in both cases. Okay? But they follow simply the alphabetical order. That's all regarding the ledger lines. The last, very last thing for today are the rest signs. What are the rest signs? In music, we can write down not only the sounds, but also the silence. And for each music value, we have the correspondent rest sign. And let's try to analyze now here. Let's write rest signs that are silence in the bracket I'm writing silence. Signs. Obviously, you will never find the silence signs. You have to you have to consider the rest signs like signs that express the silence. Okay, when you don't have to play. And for the four counts note that was uh, now you know that I I can write it here. Whatever I want is will be the same. If this one is the sign for the uh, sound it would be, pay attention, would be a kind of brick pending from the fourth line of any stave, could be the top stave or the bottom stave, has to be always like a light pending from the ceiling. Maybe I write it even better, yeah? Et voila! Which one is the difference now between the two counts silence or rest sign and the previous one, the four counts one? is that now this brick has to be on the third line is lying like an object on something on the third line even better same as I did with the other one maybe yeah okay so this one is pending from the fourth line this one this one is lying on the third line and it's all happening in the third space you see pending from the fourth line, anyways, is in the fourth space, but not touching the third line. This one lying on the third line, but not touching the fourth line. The most complicated one to understand and to maybe remember one count rest. So if the sound was expressed using one circle, filling in the head and the stem, the rest sign is this one. So obviously, it would be better if I use a book, but is something. Uh, very close to what I did. The best way to show you how they will look on a book is the one of using, for example, the AB Guide to the Music Theory of the ABRSM. This is the part one. If you go to page 15, chapter 3, you find the uh, rest signs, and this is the one that I'm talking about. Here you find the um, uh, English, the British English names, semi brief, minim, crotchet, ignore the top one. We'll talk about it in the future. And this is the rest sign I was talking about. Exactly this one, yeah? You see how it is? I hope you can see properly with a very good zoom. And this uh, kind of closed to what I did. Everybody then does in his own way. Let me maybe try to imitate strictly the way it is. Et voila! And indeed, I did exactly uh, very close to how it should be. This is the way it looks the way it should look like, okay? And since I mentioned today the dotted meaning, we can do the same now today, adding also, immediately talking about the three counts rest, that would be definitely, obviously, shown using, so if the note would be this one, dotted meaning, the rest sign simply need, again, the, the two counts rest with a simple dot on the side. Same identical story, because the power of the dot is always the same. It's adding value also to the rest sign. And in this way today, you really know the way you can show 
one count notes or rest two counts notes or rest four counts notes or rest but also the three counts sounds or rest signs i think that for today it's more than enough Obviously, if you have any question, if I uh, didn't explain properly, I mean in an um, easier way something and you would need extra explanation, simply feel free to comment, let me know if you are understanding everything, and obviously stay tuned because the best is really yet to come. If you have never subscribed to my channel and you are simply landing for the first time on my channel thanks to this video, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.